So let's look at uh, doing example 7. Uh, we're going to still graph uh, logarithmic functions, but we're just going to translate these two. Okay, Very similar to what we did in class, except now we're translating. We'll follow a very similar procedure that we've always been following for translating, which is graph the base function without the translations and then do the translations. Okay, So what we want to do is actually graph... We actually want to graph this first by making a table, y equals log base 2 of x, and we'll disregard these for now. Just make the table for that. Okay, uh, and so if we do this, a uh, good way to do this is always let x be 1, and then you're asking this question, log base 2 of 1, if x becomes 1, you're asking that question, log base 2 of 1. Well, this is means 2 to which power gives me 1, and the answer to that is always 0. Okay, log base anything of 1 is 0. So that's 1, 0. And then we pick a multiple of the base itself for our next x value. So 2. Um, so 2 times 1 is 2. And then we do log base 2 of 2. And that's asking the question 2 to which power is 2. And the answer is 1. Okay, so our first two points on our graph would be 1, 0. All right, and then 2, 1, right there. And now you should see, I'm going to do this quickly, but you'll see something like this should be the shape. And that's correct because this base here, B, which is 2, is bigger than 1. And whenever the base is bigger than 1, it's an, a logarithmic growth function. And if the base is less than 1 but bigger than 0 and not equal to 1, then it's a logarithmic decay function. Okay, uh, so we have the first two points that we graphed from this. These two we've graphed them. And now we want to do the translation. So again, this is our h value, this is our k value. And a plus 3 h value actually means go to the left 3. Okay, so we're going to translate this point left 3 and this point left 3. All right. And then uh, the k value says go up one. So we're going to go up one. Let me switch to a different color. We go up one here and up one here. So the green points represent our file translated function. Okay. Uh, and if this is confusing for you, you can always erase the intermediate points. So you can see I went uh, left three and then I went up one. Okay, left three and up one. Remember. Originally, let me go back to red, there's an asymptote here originally for a logarithmic function. Okay, always the uh, initial asymptote is at x equals 0. And so I have to translate the asymptote three units left as well. So here's my new asymptote. Remember, graphing the asymptote is crucial. Otherwise, your shape of your function will be incorrect because it'll, it won't approach the correct uh, line. And so basically we get something like this happening uh, with our logarithmic growth function, right? And so then we say, what's the domain? And remember, logs are the inverses of exponentials. So for logarithms, the domain is restricted, but the range is not restricted. So the domain here, you can see uh, this value here is negative 3. Again, uh, following along from the h there. So... I start at negative 3, but it's an open parenthesis because negative 3 is actually an asymptote for x. So I don't touch negative 3, and then I go up to infinity. Okay? Uh, let me write that better, to infinity. And then the range, okay, in terms of y, the function goes down forever, and you can see that even though it goes up slowly, it'll go up forever this way too. So um, the range is negative infinity to infinity which if you remember exponential functions, that's the inverse of an exponential function's domain range. The x and y values are switched, all right? So uh, you should probably pause the video and try this one by yourself. Make some points, graph it just the way we did here, and then see what you how you do, and then uh, watch the rest, all right? So I'll just continue assuming that you're gonna do that. Um, so same thing here. We will first graph what I always call the base function, which would be 
log base 4 of x. We'll disregard these two values for now. We won't do the translations right away. Um, and then we'll make a little table from that. Okay, so let me just do it right here. X and Y. Uh, and then again, pick X is 1. That's a safe value Okay, for this function. So I have uh, log base 4 of 1. And again, for the question here is 4 to which power gives me 1. And that's uh, 4 to the 0 power. So my answer there is 0. And then pick a multiple of 4. Smallest one would be 4 itself. When x is 4, you have log base 4 of 4, and that gives me 1 again. Okay, similar process than our previous function. So 1, 0 is my first point, and then 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 is my next point. Okay, so you can see that this function would be steeper um, than letter C. Okay, so letter C was base 2. Letter D is base 4, base 4 steeper than base 2, just like in exponentials. Okay, same, it's a, it's a very equivalent situation. Bigger base, steeper graph. Okay, and so the default asymptote before translation is usually there, x equals 0. And now what I want to do is just translate this. So uh, let's translate what are the translations. This says go to the right two units. So I'll move this point to the right. Two units and I'll move this point to the right and then this says go down five units so from there I'm gonna go down five units one two three four five right here Ooh, let me do this in a different color actually so you can see the distinction okay we go down five to there and one two three four five down to here okay and then uh, remember translating an asymptote a vertical asymptote up or down doesn't do anything. So we just want to translate the asymptote uh, two units to the right. Okay, two units to the right. So that means the asymptote for the final function would be here. Okay, and so the function will be doing something like this and then going up very steeply, even though it won't become horizontal. Let me uh, draw that properly. It won't become horizontal, but it'll be very steep. Okay, like that. So the function will do something like this, okay? And then uh, we'll do the same thing. What's the domain and range? Uh, the domain, so you can see here, is 2 for x right here. So the function goes from 2 up forever. So from 2 up forever to the right, okay? Uh, and then the, dom uh, the range, again, uh, for logarithmic functions, the range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, because in terms of y, the function goes down forever, and even though this is a slow, gradual increase, it'll increase forever to infinity. All right, and so uh, that's the domain range. So for, remember, for exponentials, the domain is always negative infinity to infinity, and for logarithms, the range is always negative infinity to infinity, and its domain is restricted. Okay, so that's basically that. It's very, very similar to exponentials, except these are inverses. So things are switched around. The x and y values are switched around. Okay?